Hello everyone, welcome back. In today's session, we'll be discussing about Alfred's macros. As we have already seen, like we'll be working on like data preparation, data cleaning, and all that stuff. So that we have seen, and we have seen like uh, how the Alfred's tools will be helping us to clean our data, to merge, append, append the data, all that stuff. Now, like macros are also useful, very very useful part of uh, Alfred Designer. Where like we can create a process and that process can be reused again and again. If you have noticed and uh, if you have tried to explore, then uh, whatever tools like we have, all these are macros itself. So there is a big big processes happening at the uh, back end, uh, regard back end, uh, behind the screen and behind the tools. For you, it's just a small tool, but actually there is a big process happening behind that. As you can see, I'll just uh, add this deploy tool, which is under predictive, and I'll just right click. And if I show you, then I'll show you a very big workflow, actually a macro, uh, which is running behind the screen and uh, which is uh, helping you to get the result, to get you the predictive analytics and all that stuff, okay, without writing any code. So that is the reason why we call that its macros are very very useful. So this is a basically a macro which will be used to provide the functionality of deploy tool. Like, like this, like there are hundreds of other macros which are available. So these are the small tool for you, but actually it's a big macro. So the same thing we can create and we can uh, bring up different kind of macros and all. So when we click on like um, a canvas, this is basically a canvas screen. And uh, when you are working on like your standard workflows and all, then whatever you just click on the workflows, it will show you the standard workflow. But uh, if you want to create macros or apps, Alfred's apps and all, uh, then you have to use the interface tool. And whenever like uh, you add any of the tool here, any of the tool, let's say macro input, it's just a kind of uh, input tool. The way we were getting input output tools to get the data, same way we can use the macro input. So macro input tool again, like uh, it's a tool which helps us to get the data. Now, if you click on the canvas configuration and if you click on the workflow, it will show you the macro. Earlier, it was showing you standard workflow. Now, it is showing you the macro. If you're creating an app, then it will show you app. Okay. And there are four different types of macros. Like uh, macros, like here is standard macro, batch macro, iterative macro, location optimizer macro and all. We will go to each of these like macros in coming sessions like uh, uh, where like I'll be discussing about each type of uh, macro. But today we'll see a very basic example which will help you to realize that how macros can be used. So this will give you a kind of uh, 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 kind of like in, like no information that uh, macros will be re will be used and you can reuse them again and again in your workflows requirements. So here I'm just creating an input tool, and this tool will help me to get the data from different sources. Let's say it can be a text file or it can be a file input file. Uh, configure where I can load the data from different sources. I can connect to databases and all. Okay, for now I'm just uh, loading the data from a text input. So I'm just taking a text input data and uh, I'll just name this column as a number. Okay, and uh, I'll just get a few numbers here. So I'll get 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. So I have just taken these six values here. So this is basically going to be as byte as we know so the data what you are typing here it will be considered as byte so for now so that because my requirement will be to load the double data and all that kind of information so what i'll do I, here itself i can just uh, change this to uh, double or something okay so i'll just have a double change the data type it to double okay so this i have done here and now i can proceed further so as I told you, macro will be helping you to create, uh, to repeat the process again and again. So what I want, I want to do a formula. So I'll just go to preparation and uh, I'll get a formula tool. Okay. So this formula tool will help me to uh, get the data and uh, do the calculation. So I, I'll do, I'll just get a co new column. So say result. Okay. That is the new column which I am creating. And uh, I have this number column. So I'll take this number column and I'll say multiply by five. So this is the column which I am taking and obviously I want this data to be showing up here as double. So that is the data type which I have defined here. But going back to the macro input tool, like here I have to define few things. 
So I can name this tool as input data, which is going to get the data for me. And abbreviation, when I will use this macro, the input should show me some information so that I can easily identify that, okay, here I have to add the, attach the input. Okay, uh, so I'll just name it as I. And if you want to see the field map, if you want to show the optional incoming connection for the input data tool, then you can use it. This is quite important and you have to uh, like uh, learn about this. Okay, uh, read about this thing. And, okay, and uh, that's all for now. And uh, I'll just get the output. So for the output again, I don't need to use the normal output tool. I'll have another tool called macro output. So that will get me the output here. So okay, I'll name it again here the same way. The output data. That's all. I don't have to do anything else. Just a couple of details, and you are done. I'll name it as O. Okay. But do you think like the macro is created? No, because we have not defined macro is the thing like which will repeat the process. Now I have defined the calculation as number multiplied by five. But I want to change this value as uh, something 10. I don't want to hard code this value. I want to keep on changing this value. So how do I do that? So for that, we will add few interactive options, interactive tools. So those are again part of interface tools. So we have this drop down, list box, check box, and radio buttons and text boxes and all that. For now, I'll just add a text box. Okay. And uh, this way, like what I can do, uh, I can attach it to my tool. So text box will allow me to, uh, sorry, yeah, text box will allow me to add uh, a information, pass on the information so that my user can see the uh, what they have to do. So enter the value for, I'll say like this. Enter the value for return. You can leave all these detailed default text and all that, not required. Now what should we do? And uh, one thing if you have noticed that since we are working on the macros, so select tool, formula tool, these are quite different what you have already used. If you notice there is a lightning icon here, here also, and there's a queue icon here. So this way what it tells you that uh, these are not normal tools now, these are part of your macro. So you are working on a macro tool which will help you to get the result, to get the output out of your like uh, workflow process. So now next thing what you have to do is like connect this uh, text box to your uh, formula tool and connect it to the lightning icon here. As soon as you add this lightning, what happens the, a new tool called action tool is added automatically added onto your canvas. Okay. This is something like uh, you might have seen the movie shootings and all that like where the director will be uh, uh, clicking on that uh, action this board and they have to after that the, the thing started. Same thing here. So you are the director here, you are directing the things, you have to tell the macro that what it need to do, it need to do, okay? So what you have to do here, you just go here in the action tool, so update the values, there are multi, uh, three things here, update row XML data and uh, update value and update value with formula. So we'll be using a va update value. So formula field, this is the formula what you have added here in the formula, remember? So this is the same thing what you have done here. I want my value as 5 to be replaced again and again based on my requirement. So I'll just change, I'll check this option, replace a specific string and I'll remove remaining things and I'll keep only this 5 number. So this way what I want, my user will be keep on updating this value according to his requirement. That is what I want. So a macro is created, macro is ready. Now what else? Can we directly use this? No, we have to save this macro. So what I'll do, I'll just go to file and I will say save as. I can save this as a local file or in the gallery. Okay, so for now I'll be adding it as a local file. So here, like uh, I'll go to my desktop and I'll save this as test macro. So I'll save it as test macro. And if you notice that the extension of this macros are dot yxmp. So you have to remember uh, what are the extension of macro standard workflows and apps. And here you see that uh, macro is yxmc, workflow is yxmd. Okay, so remember these things. Uh, I'll just save this. So the macro is created and if you go to my desktop and here you see this. So icons of the three different things are obviously different. So one is macro, standard workflow and, and another thing, third thing is apps. So the icons are different so that you can easily differentiate them. Now we have created this macro, what else? So what I'll do, I'll just create a new page 
and uh, I'll just load some data here. So a normal input data tool, that is what we are doing. So as I told you, this macro is a single tool, a small icon, and which is holding an information. So which is holding an information. So I'll add that a new file. So I'm just loading the superstore subset PSV file. And uh, here, like we have all these values, all these columns and everything. Now, since we are reading in a CSV file, obviously I have to put, like I have to use a select tool, which will help uh, me to change the data type. It's a very important thing if you forget then uh, all your columns will be reading up as a string. So I'll, for now, for the testing purpose, since we are doing it for testing purpose, I'll just change column name for like column data types for few columns only just to show you. So I have just changed the data types for profit and sales only. Now what I need, I need to add that uh, macro. So how do you add the macros? So right click, say insert and say macro and you will find this thing. So you can either browse to the location or you can just click on the macro what is showing up here. So I'll just click on this and that macro is added here. As, as I told you uh, just now a few minutes back that macro will be showing up as like input and output I, uh, anchors. So these are called anchors as you already know. So I and O. So this is your input anchor. This is your output anchor. Now what else I need? I just need to add a form like a browse tool so that I can show you the data or the result output of this. And uh, here I have to define obviously I need to configure the tool. So I, I'll see only two columns here whichever is defined as double. So I'll take let's say sales and uh, I'll multi there I have multiplied by 5 in the macro but now I'll change it to 10 so that I can easily like see the values so that is configuration is done now I'll run this workflow so this is a normal workflow here and now I'll get the result so here you see that uh, I'll get a new column called result which will get me the result of sales multiplied by 10 so sales says here you see the number column which is changed to like sales column which is changed to the number so this 5.9 is the original value and multiply by 10 it is 59 13.01 is the original value 130.1 is a uh, new value which is a result of your macro so like this you can create many number of uh, macros you, this is a very very basic kind of example which i have showed you like incoming like uh, videos like i'll show you a very like extensive macros also we will have work on batch macro iterative macros and uh, lo location optimizer macro so for now just like uh, go through this and try to replicate it try to do it by yourself and try to implement with new data sets and